I'm honored and delighted to be here. Thank you for coming to hear us speak. Thank you, Greg, for that thoughtful introduction. Thank you, Lex, Le, uh, Lexi, for your attention to everything. A friend of mine, when he was nervous and about to speak, would say this. I'm going to say a few words before I talk. <laughs> I'm going to say a few words before I talk. John Adair, an anthropologist, is my voice all right? Yes. Thank you. An anthropologist uh, who spent most of his life on the Navajo Nation had a special project to teach Navajos how to operate, only operate, uh, handheld 16 millimeter cameras to see if they would make a film with a different world view. And he went to see Sam, who was 80 years old at the time. This story is uh, half a century ago. And asked Sam to support this project. Sam looked away and down and said, will it help the sheep, these movies? Adair said, no, I don't think it'll help the sheep. Sam looked down and to the side and said, will these movies do any harm to the sheep? No, I don't think they'll affect the sheep at all. Sam looked down and to the side again and said, then why make movies? <laughs> Two scenes. The second is Edward Sapir and uh, Benjamin Lee Wharf about this same time. Uh, we're doing re linguistic research and made the observation that we almost fully accept now that the way we speak, our language and our thoughts, structure our reality. Uh, I argue that in my presentation. My discussion for this symposium concentrates on the theory of native and indigenous transmotion or the inspired evolution of cosmototemic natural motion of memory and cultural survivance. Totemic motion can be observed on ancient stone, in cavern art, in songs and stories, and in contemporary portrayals by native and indigenous artists, and of course, in documentary films. John Adair, the cultural and visual anthropologist, and Saul Worth, the painter and photographer, conducted a film project almost 50 years ago at Pine Springs, Arizona, on the Navajo Nation. The project considered the distinct cultural perceptions of native participants and with only a basic technical introduction to the use of cameras. Seven documentary movies, brief scenes of native motion and experiences were created without the obvious experience of filmic production or editing. Adair and Worth noted in the introduction to their book on this subject, Through Navajo Eyes, that the study is how a group of people structure their view of the world their reality through film. The authors inquired, what would happen if someone with a culture that makes and uses motion, motion pictures taught people who had never made or used motion pictures to do so for the first time? That context of reality was natural motion a discrete perception of cultural gestures and action over abstract descriptions. Adair observed that the Navajo are people for whom motion is central to language 
and to major areas of their cultural life. That sense of natural motion was a cultural practice in weaving, sand painting, dancing, walking, and the knowledge of visions sustained in cinematography. Almost all the films made by the Navajos portray what to members of our culture, Adair said, seems to avoid as an inordinate amount of walking. The movies portrayed scenes of ordinary motion, even mere feet in motion, and a shadow walking across the field. The selected lines, feeling light within, I walk. With beauty all around me, I walk. Our translations from the ceremonial songs of the Yebiche or the night chant, walking is a cultural motion and walking is a song and it's visionary. Adair noted that the weaver in one movie spends 15 minutes walking to gather vegetables for the dye, walking to collect roots for soap, walking to shear the wool, a cultural portrayal of natural motion. Only a few minutes of the 22-minute film focused on the actual weaving. In another Cinema Verite movie, the mask of a Yebiche walks and walks and walks, searching for the turning wheel. The portrayal creates a sense of animism in a natural environment. The wheel moves behind a building, and the camera follows the perception of the motion, but not the actual presence of the wheel. Ancient artists created marvelous scenes of native presence and natural motion on stone. And in the shadows of monumental caves more than 30,000 years ago, these visionary artists painted elusive scenes of motion in caverns that have now become great museums of cosmo-totemic art. The shadows and natural motion of the scenes have inspired modern native and indigenous artists, George Morrison and Robert Houle, for instance, to name only two of many, many consummate native artists, have created scenes of natural motion by contours and hues and by abstractions of form and custom. Robert Houle's The Road Home, a recent exhibition of scenes, shadows, and memories of a res residential school are painted in natural motion. The gestures are elusive and the colors are visceral memories. David McIntosh wrote in the exhibition catalog that the palette was gaudy and a remarkable feature of the art is the sense of movement. The scenes, in other words, are the natural motion of shadows and memories. Shadows are a natural presence in native stories and artistic scenes. Shadows are vital, animate, and shadows create a sense of presence the Anishinaabe word, agawatese, for example, is defined as a shadow of flight, a totemic image of presence, not the mere absence of light or a passive cast of the source. George Morrison teased the elusive hues of natural motion and envisioned an eternal horizon in his memorable abstract creations, an aesthetic 
meditation on the tones of nature and memory. Morrison learned the words of motion, of shadows, and the colors of natural scenes in two languages, Anishinaabe and English, a distinct reality of motion in two languages. The Anishinaabe word inazo, an animate verb that means in translation, colored in a certain way, traces the native sensibilities of his expressionistic, expressionistic art. The word miskal, or red for instance, is a visual memory, as in miskolman, or raspberry, miskwakwak, or red cedar, miskwi, or blood, and the word miskwazi means to have measles. Morrison likely observed the tricky tone of ojawashko, a word that means blue and green, the hue of a bruise, or a name also for green tea. The horizons he painted are visionary. The colors and contours are traces of natural motion. The horizon lines are a visceral union of natural motion, a cosmototemic association of stories and memories. Morrison said, I believe in going back to the magic of the earth and the lake, the sky and the universe, that kind of magic, a religion of the rocks, the lake, the water, the sky. The Anishinaabe word, o tutumi, have to have a totem or indudum, my totem, my clan, is an association of natural motion, a sense of totemic presence and survivance, and native resistance to the perversions of shamanic power over nature. Totems and natural motion are at the very heart of artistic perception and cultural memory. The artist, artistic ethos of the crucial sentiments of natural motion and liberty are revealed in ancient caverns, in the portrayal of the natural motion of animals, and the essential scenes of survivance are visionary and embodied in cave art, on stone, hide, on birch bark, on paper, and on canvas. The Chauvet Cave in the Ardèche River in France is one of the most recent discoveries of ancient native art. The stately scenes of cave bears and lions and horses are spectacular, and the shadows and natural motion of the totemic animals are evocative after 30,000 years. The singular row of horses is similar to horses painted on hide and paper by native cosmo-totemic artists. The Chauvet Cave in Alaska, Cave in France, the Cave of Altamira in Spain are prominent in Europe. The ancient rock sites in Arizona, and California, Minnesota, and Ontario, Canada, and the most famous are the most famous in North America. There are many other prominent rock sites of art in the world. The Cave of Swimmers, for instance, a site of erotic rock art figures in marvelous natural motion, buoyant on the sandstone, was documented in the mountains of southwest Egypt. The elements of form, perspectives of natural motion, and visionary dimensions in ancient native art anticipated Impressionism, Cubism, Surrealism, and postmodernism. Form, in the narrow sense, is nothing but 
the separating line between surfaces of color, declared Kandinsky in concerning the spiritual in art. He wrote, this is its outer meaning, but it has also an inner meaning or varying intensity and properly speaking, Form is the outward expression of this inner meaning. Cosmototemic portrayals of animals and figures in natural motion were enhanced by contours and by the buoyant colors of language, culture, and memory. Hello. Dorothy Dunn established the studio school at the Santa Fe Indian School in 1932. Native student artists, she resolved, should not be distracted by modernism. And she ins insisted that the students concentrate on flat contours that depict native traditions. Dunn believed that there was an authentic Indian way to paint, observed Janet Berlow and Ruth Phillips in their study of native art, native North American art. Presume this at this symposium, that Dorothy Dunn might have encouraged the native artists to imagine cosmototemic totemic native motion. The history of native art would not have been the same. The cosmototemic portrayals by some native artists in Canada and the United States are inspired perceptions of natural motion. Norval Morrissey, for instance, painted radiant scenes of natural motion contours of shamanic forms, transparent animals, and creature transmutations. Carl Beam was an extraordinary visionary and innovative artist, and the traces of scenes in natural motion, the contour overlays and transparencies were present in his elusive creations of manifold images and chronicles. The ancient cosmototemic artists who painted the panel of four horses and other animals on contours of stone at Chavez Cave and on granite in the canoe country near Lake of the Woods are the ancestors of modern native and indigenous painters of continental liberty. Contemporary cosmototemic artists have created similar scenes of natural motion, horses afloat, as in the ledger art, and transparent animals in the collage of ancestral survivance and remembrance. My ideas of transmotion and survivance will probably not help or hurt the sheep. <laughs> but my ideas will help the river otter, the wolf, bear, and my totem, the sandhill crane. Miigwech. <laughs>